when when this place is packed like that, this is a, one of the toughest places, if not the toughest place to play in the country. And um, you know, I, I thought our fans were huge. Um, they did, they did a good job of lifting us up, especially in the first half when we got behind a little bit. Uh, you know, all week, you know, we've been talking about uh, guys playing together. And one of the things that I've said about this team is that in order for us to be very successful, we all have to play together. Uh, when you look at it, we had seven guys in, in double figures. We shared the basketball. We had 17 assists and only 10 turnovers. Uh, I challenged those guys the last couple of days that if we had a chance to win the game, we had to do a great job and win the rebound battle. And I thought we did that, obviously, give, getting 14, rebound, 14 offensive rebounds and not and only giving up 12. Uh, also, we wanted to do a great job getting back in transition. So uh, give Duke a lot of credit. It's a very good basketball team. Um, Bagley is as, as good as advertised. And um, I'm proud of my guys. I thought they did a tremendous job. And they worked hard for the last couple of days. You know, after starting ACC play, on the road at two tough venues for us to bounce back and get a great win. Um, you got to be proud of these guys. Questions? Coach, uh, how much did Lamar Bagley provide a spark for this team off the bench coming in? He had seven points, uh, four rebounds, and five assists in this game. I thought he was great. I thought uh, LeVar grew up today. Uh, you know, he came in at a, at a moment where we were really struggling to score the basketball. And just the energy that he brought to the team, he, he got to the rim. Um, you know, he found some guys, made some great passes. You know, when you look at him and Braxton, they're both babies in the ACC, and they both have been forced to grow up quick, and they both are doing a good job with it. So Duke ranks first in the ACC in offensive rebounding percentage. You rank 11th in defensive rebounding percentage. We saw that in the first 10 minutes. They got lots of second shots. At 27-16, something changed. What changed? What enabled you to get all those defensive rebounds especially, and then on the offensive boards as well? Well, we talked about it. I mean, you know, I, listen, those guys, um, I, I think coming in, their percentage was unbelievable as far as the shots that they missed that they get back. I think they're right, they were right at 44% of their misses. And, you know, I, I wasn't happy uh, through our first time out because I felt like they beat us to a lot of 50-50 balls. And, you know, we made the effort. And, and I told them it, it wasn't just going to come from, you know, the post position. Everybody has to come in and rebound, and everybody has to do a great job of rebounding the ball and blocking out. And, you know, I, I thought we were tremendous. Um, you know, and you're right. I mean, that's the, it's one of the best rebounding teams in the country. And, and for us to uh, all rebound them tonight says a lot about our guys. Confidence of this team change after this point. I mean, uh, obviously it is just one win, but it is a win at PNC over a number two team in the country. How much does the confidence change for this team now? Well, I, it certainly helps. Um, you know, but I, I will say this: I don't think this team ever lost confidence. Um, you know, I, I've said this all along. You know, we had a tough start. You know, it was only two teams in the ACC that had to start on the road. That was us and Miami. Uh, and, and we played against two really good basketball teams on the road. Uh, we just needed to get home. We needed to get home and sleep in our own bed. We needed to get home and get some home cooking, and, and certainly it worked out. It seemed like you guys shared the ball a lot better tonight offensively than you did the first two games on the road. What, who, who made the biggest difference there? What, what caused that to happen? Well, I think it was everybody, and I think it started with Al Freeman. You know, uh, you know we, I sit down with Al, and I sit down with every guard and, say, and told him, if we're going to be successful, with this group of guys that we have, we have to play off each other. And I thought everybody, you know, made the uh, right passes. I thought everybody played very unselfish. And, you know, if you look back at our, our games that we won and we played well, we really shared the basketball. Coach, when you're, you have the media timeout right before the first half, you're down by four, two minutes to play. It's usually a time when a team like Duke, as talented as they are, can make a run and uh, make that a 10-point game instead of a – uh, a couple point game, but you ended up taking the taking the lead at the half. What did you talk to the guys about at that point, and uh, how important was what they did at that point? Well, we talked about staying the course. Um, you know, we wanted them to all night long have to play against our half court defense. Uh, you know, I, as I told you, if you look at Duke, uh, you know, they're, they're so talented, but they score so much in transition. And then they score so many points off of offensive rebounds. We felt like if we could keep them out of the off the glass, and we did a great job of spreading back, not giving them easy baskets, that we would have the opportunity to win the game. Your front line combined for 39 points. Al hit five assists, which I think is one of his higher totals this year. Connection there. Well, you know, we, we talked about experience. You know, it, when you look at Duke, it's a you know, heck of a, you know, Bagley's unbelievable. They all are. 
But one thing that I told our guys is that you're going to play against uh, Grayson Allen, who's a tremendous basketball player, and four freshmen who are all in high school, as talented as they were, uh, talented as they are, they played high school last year. And so what we ask our guys is to use your experience. Um, you know, play like veterans. And I, and I thought they all did. Because with Omir in particular, he's going up against a guy that may be a number one pick overall in the draft a lot. And Played pretty tough. We tried to. He hung in there with good defense a couple of times without getting fouls. What did you think of the way he sort of handled that kind of challenge? I, I thought he played well. Um, you know, he scored around the basket. Um, I thought he did a tremendous job. Um, you know, scouting reported. You know, checking Bagley. When you look at the numbers, you're going to say, "Well, ba Bagley had 31, and what did he have? 10." But I thought he did a great job of, um, you know, forcing him to to his right. And, and the kid makes some tough shots. I mean, we played against some really good freshmen this year when you talk about Bagley and Aiden. Hey, Coach, uh, I'm out of Leesburg, Virginia, where I know you back in the day. But will you, will you rank this victory by being the first-year coach here at NC State, one of your best victory wins of all time? Well, since it's my uh, first ACC win, um, I think it's the best one that I've got so far. No, it's a, it's a, it's a great win, you know. I but but what I I told our guys, I said, you know, every win that we have, I want you to celebrate and be excited about it. But you know, don't be satisfied. You know, we, just because we beat the number two team in the country, you know, that's just not that's not what we're trying to build. We want to build a program where we're winning consistently every night. After the Notre Dame loss, you mentioned that what's going on in practice hasn't translated to in games in the ACC. Was there anything different? this week in practice prior to the Duke game? No, and, and that's been tough on me because we have practiced well. I think I told you guys before the Jacksonville game that we shot the ball well, but we haven't shot it well in the game. And then in Jacksonville, obviously, we made shots. And finally, you know, our hard work and practice, if, if you ever saw a practice, well, I shouldn't say that because everybody's going to try to come to practice now. But, but we practice extremely hard. Our guys play extremely well. And we just hadn't had that same energy and effort once we got in the uh, games. And I thought we did tonight. You guys were able to upset Arizona when they were number two early in the season. Now a second win against a second ranked team. What does your team learn from this one that it maybe wasn't able to see the first time around? Well, I don't know what my team learned, but I, I know what I learned. Every team that we play, I'm going to tell them they're ranked number two in the country. <laughs> yeah. I think that's, you know, it's, you know, listen, we, we, we have, uh, we have a good season going on, and, and when you look at it, obviously, this, this league is tough. And we think about, if you look around the league, and I'm, I'm guessing on this, but I would say 75 to 80 percent of the home teams have won in the first three or four games. And so having the opportunity to come back home and, you know, after, you know, just starting on the road two games, I thought it made our guys feel a little comfortable. And, and our, our students and fans were tremendous. Your backcourt had to adjust when Markel was gone. Uh, how, how have Braxton and, and LeVar and Sam and everybody, how, is this the culmination of what they've been working on? Well, I think the guy, it, it's two guys that has stepped up in that situation. Uh, Braxton obviously has to play a lot of minutes. Uh, but LeVar Batch is starting to come. And so now I have the ability to play him and then mix Sam in there and then give Al and also Braxton a little breather and they can play off the ball. So, you know, by those two, Sam and LeVar playing a little bit better, it's actually helped our team. Two more for Coach. How helpful, how helpful was it to have the depth in the front court? Because as your seven fouls out, Abu comes in and so forth. Oh, it's great. I mean, you know, we one thing that we, we do have is uh, we got three guys that play in our front court that I, I feel real comfortable with. And I, I see it as three starters. I rotate those guys in and out. And, uh, you know, I thought all three guys played great for us. Last one. Kevin, you said earlier you, you never felt like the team lost confidence. But coming off of that Notre Dame game, how did you get them, especially down 11 early in the second half today, how did you get them just to kind of keep that from creeping in their psyche and – to be able to fight through it? Well, I thought, looking back at the Notre Dame game, I thought it was more Notre, Notre Dame playing well than us playing bad. I mean, when you look at it, they made 11 threes, and, and that same Notre Dame team went on the road and, and, and won at a tough Syracuse place today without two of their starters. Um, so I thought that they played well. I didn't, think that, I didn't think we scored the ball at Notre Dame, and that's the reason why we lost the game, because we weren't able to score it, because we didn't share the basketball. Thanks, guys.